What's up and good morning guys, welcome back to another video. We've got a little change of scenery here this morning. Well, I mean, kind of, it's a very similar interior, but no, we are not in uh, the OBS or the BBB. We are actually in Chris's GMC. And I know a lot of you guys really like Chris's truck. It's more your style than like the obnoxious build of my truck. So I've borrowed it today for the channel. Chris doesn't know, don't tell him. No, I'm actually just kidding. Uh, Chris's truck is getting a light bar installed today. And let me see here, I think I got my, my preset because Chris actually sits in the back seat when he drives. All right, there we go. Chris's truck is getting a light bar installed, so I'm gonna drop his truck off. And then if you see in the bed of the truck, we've got a ton of SEMA parts that are now starting to show up. So I'm gonna show you guys what we got over there. I'm gonna let you know who we're working with with SEMA because, well, their parts are back there. I'm gonna give you an update on Wes's truck. I'm gonna give you an update on a bunch of things. So stay tuned. Now, before we jump into unboxing the SEMA stuff, I wanna show you guys the scooter seat that came back for my, uh, my fat scooter. It turned out absolutely killer. I've got the old base right here, which was like, super hard and wait till you guys see the new one. Oh, and by the way in case you guys missed in uh i don't know last video video before all of our work for it hats are back in stock except for the leather patch hat which will be back in stock soon and we've also got bins coming because i cannot stand the disorganizedness of this my ocd hates it but let's go check out the uh the fat scooter seat so i opted to have it done instead of doing it in the uh brown leather i decided we should have it done to match the bbb build because well it goes to truck shows with me all the time so it is sitting right there and before we pull it out of the package just look at the, the size difference there in the foam padding let's do a squish test here very stiff not fun to sit on oh very nice so check that out guys what do you think i am super stoked on how this turned out he actually ended up using the uh perforated vinyl as well and I'm telling you, like this matches the seats almost perfectly in the BBB build with the white piping on it. Let's do a little comparison. A BBB meet scooter seat. Scooter seat meet BBB. Look at that. So Oscar's upholstery, the day that we went to Oscar, he wasn't there. Um, so Chris actually went back a couple days later and put Oscar on the phone while he was standing next to him. He's like, what do you want? And I was like, well, I sent a picture to Chris's phone of the BBB's uh, center console. And Oscar didn't even save that picture. Just off of memory, he was able to match it this freaking well so a huge thank you to oscar i cannot wait to get this mounted on the scooter the scooter is unfortunately not at the warehouse right now so i got to bring it back over here and mount it up and more so i think my friends are gonna be more excited because i swear they ride that thing way more than i do at the uh, shows that we go to so i'm currently waiting on that truck to pull out of the way so i can move the bbb build out and move chris's truck in and i can't pull out that way because well we got a tow truck right there so while we wait let's crack open uh the sema parts that have shown up and one of the things i love about sema and working with sr designs is every day is like christmas um you don't really know what's going to show up at your front doorstep and yesterday i got home and well i saw these boxes out there and i'm like huh what is that and well let's just crack into it and i was hoping to have my rendering done by now which would have told you guys what company i'm working with but since the rendering's not done i guess i'm just gonna end up telling you guys we're actually going to be in the anzo lighting booth at sema so it's gonna be a different experience than last year because this is number one an indoor booth so that's like a whole nother animal of figuring out getting inside and then getting out after sema like that's gonna be crazy and chaotic so uh you guys are gonna see a lot of behind the scenes of that and actually our good buddy uh wheezy is going to be in the anzo booth with us as well with his duramax so it'd be cool to kind of have us teamed up together but let's jump into parts here we've got a bully dog programmer and keep in mind this is all going on the uh, Tahoe SEMA build that we're doing so a bully dog programmer showed up with their uh, windshield mount I've never run bully dog on anything so this will be interesting to see and now for these big boxes I actually haven't even opened these yet I got home late last night and didn't want to open them but these are obviously from the front here these are from Anzo so these are the headlights and the tail lights for the Tahoe and like I said I haven't seen them I don't know what they are um, I didn't really pick any headlights or taillights, so let's see what we got. Okay. All right, this is a first for both of us. I don't know what that is. Looks like we've got the blacked out. Oh, there went my knife. Luckily, I didn't stab my foot. We've got their blacked out taillights. I thought, being that Anzo was the sponsor, that I wasn't allowed to like touch the factory look of their lights, because obviously that's what they're going to be selling. But uh, I was told that like I can go in and customize these. I just don't know if anybody makes clear lenses for the uh, for the brake lights there. Now we're getting over to the big old box here. This I'm assuming is the headlights. And for those of you wondering what knife I use, it's just a uh, pretty basic Kershaw. These headlights are huge. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Oh, and there we go. I believe these are I don't know. I don't know if you call them halos because they don't really go all the way around, but. These are all um, backlit, running lights. 
And then it looks like we've got a bunch of LEDs coming through here, which I'm assuming are also daytime running lights. When you're looking at the front of the vehicle, you're kind of going to see it like that. So you don't really see too much of the amber. And it looks like all this high gloss uh, plastic around here almost looks like it was already painted to match. Um, if you're going black. So I'm really excited to be working with Anzo this year, taking the Tahoe to SEMA. Um, this is like one of 20,000 more things we have to do to get the build ready. We got a couple other partners jumping on board, which I will announce in the very near future. Hopefully I have the rendering soon because there's some cool stuff I want to do with the body as well. And then if any of you guys have any ideas on how to make the Tahoe cool for SEMA, let me know down in the comments. And just like that, perfect timing, the truck has moved, so now we can pull the old BBB out. Ugh, little tight squeeze over here. Came in at a weird angle yesterday. Oh, the old truck shuffle. You guys are getting a lot of GMC interior shots today. So not only did I get my uh, scooter seat back from upholstery, but if you guys remember, Wes has been working on his audio setup and splitting his back seat into two captain chairs, essentially. Is it done, Wes? Two captain chairs without armrests, but... Well, even the front seats don't have armrests anymore. If you guys are familiar, the truck comes with the bench seat. They call it a 60-40. This side is the 40 side. It's already pretty much a single seat and it folds up. What I wanted to do was mirror that for the driver's side. So had the bench cut down and then my leather uh, trimmed around it to make it look as factory as they could. Uh, we showed look. it a couple days ago and Wes had actually got this seat from somebody else that started the process, but they did it in the black leather to match their interior. So Wes had his high country interior cut down and now both seats are matching. So he's got the high country, two split seats. Let me go in the front because it looks cooler from the front. The reason he's doing this is he's going to build a custom center console with all of his audio equipment. Have you decided what you're going to do? Are we going in the, the subs right here coming all the way down or are we going to do the subs under the seat and then like an amp rack or something? So I, what I've been thinking just to make it as uh, you know, useful as it, as it could get is continue with my plan of doing the subs under the, the seats. If you guys look, I actually did the seat lift to get the clearance. So it's got a LMI welding two and a half inch seat lift yeah so i did the seat lift to get more clearance i know it needs to be vacuumed i was working back here that gave me the clearance that i would need to do the the sub box underneath and what i'd like to do is uh amp rack cup holders you know make it look a little bit lucky i think that'd be cool i think that'd be nicer than having subs there because you're gonna yeah, want to put your arm there and you right, don't want to put that on exactly. subs. exactly so this will be a little more functional so one of the things that i didn't know um is that these seats will actually tilt forward like if you guys remember the older style chevys um, the back of the seat flips down instead of like on the trucks now. The uh, if I can get it from this angle, unless I'm not strong enough, buddy. You got so me. when they're stock, they are only designed to to do this. So that gives you a decent amount of room here. With the seat lift on this year of truck, 14 to 18, as far as I know, once you do the seat lift, it allows it to clear the hook back here and allows you to fold them down. So if you did mount your amps back here something you could get to them so basically um, the way these trucks work is this is already factory with this little catch whatever you want to call it right here right this hook slides into that and then latches or latches keeps the right. back so keeps the back yeah if you see forward. when west folds this seat up it actually raises raises the entire thing but from the factory when you don't have these little risers underneath here it doesn't raise it high enough for that hook to clear right here. So your hook is still in there. So your seat won't fold forward. So Wes was saying some guys are actually cutting yeah, this. So there's a mod out there. You can look for YouTube where if you don't do the seat lift, you cut about an inch and a half off this hook and then you test fit, make sure it works. Sometimes you might have to bend it out a little bit or bend it downwards to make it still catch and not have any play. Um, I went with the seat lift, which did not require me to cut it. Um, so if any of you guys want to get like that old school, I don't know really why because it's not that useful. The older trucks that actually folded like to where it made like a flatter platform. But if you need to get back here for anything or if you want to put subs or and oh, well, I guess you can't. I, I think you could put subs back there. Everybody says no, but I think it's possible. But um, it's cool to know because I had no clue that these things actually had that function available with a little bit of modification. And then I had some people hit me up already because I kind of broke the news on Instagram. But I didn't personally pay to have the seat cut down. I bought a seat from a guy on a forum that had already started the project. I just had my, my material transferred over, but it no longer used the mounting bolts next to this seat for the because it fully extended to here. It'll only use the two original on the very far driver's side and then the two in the middle to mount to mount the new so cut down. So it's still seat. safely securely mounted. Mounts with four bolts just like this seat does. Ford, if I can make a center console that like perfectly match the front factory one. I would love to do a setup like this because typically we don't have three people in the backs of our trucks anyway. 
Right. And it's just a cooler, cleaner look, I think, to have. I mean, I wonder if you can almost take like a factory center console, cut it down. I bet something. it's. I bet if I, I well, I have a tape measure. <laughs> we can see what length it is. I, I've seen guys. It's about 33 inches. I think it was like 36 is what we had. So yeah, you actually have more than enough room. Well, make sure you guys stay tuned. Um, we're getting close, right? You gotta yeah, be getting I mean, real close. Wes has almost all the parts that he needs. He just. I have everything I need besides some of the custom fabs that I'm doing. It's gonna be a little bit of a wait. Tomorrow, we'll get an update because I think we have a big surprise for tomorrow. Oh, ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My stuff's going to be ready tomorrow. For all you guys that have been waiting on my center console, trust me, I've been waiting too, but they're putting a lot of killer touches on it, so it's taking some time to do it right. Um, but I think tomorrow is going to be the actual day that we do the full install of the custom center console in my OBS. So, I hate to break it to you, Wes, but mine's going to sound better then. Oh, you know, what are you putting, like four eights in this thing? That's it? I got one solid supercharged uh, yeah, DD yeah, Audio 8. Exactly. You got your... <laughs> Can't, can't compete with that uh, <laughs> DD Audio. So for uh, Work for World Headquarters 2.0, the little inventory section we got in there, obviously with our uh, our shirt setup. I mentioned it earlier in the video, I've been looking for bins for the hats, and I've been actually looking for bins for everything because our shirts come all uh, pre-bagged and folded, and well, they're very slippery, so if you like bump a little bit, all of a sudden they'll start to slide off the shelves. I don't know if you guys have seen like the big boy warehouses where everything's like nicely in a plastic bin. Well, I looked at those bins. They are very, very expensive. And well, we're trying to do everything on our own here, and you know, you gotta work with what you got. I actually found, I guess, the uh, budget friendly option, which are these right here, made by Uline, and they actually fold out into uh, cardboard bins. Now, this is unfortunately as tall as they come in a depth that really fits on our shelves. Being that we're not using like commercial pallet racking, we've only got a uh, 16 inch deep shelf. Put that right there. Still got a little bit of room there to grow, but let's see, most importantly, if a shirt fits in there. Oh, like a glove. All right, I'm excited now. Let's stock these boogers up. I think I calc it out without the hats. We need 90 bins. It's a lot of bins. I didn't order 90. I only ordered, uh, I think 50. Well, 25 of two different sizes just to make sure one works. But um, I'm telling you guys, these things are like a couple bucks a piece, maybe a little bit less than that, as opposed to like $30 for a plastic bin. Take a good look at our shelving now, and we'll see you in a second once I get everything in a box. And well, unfortunately we didn't have enough bins to go all the way around, but I've got to say everything is already way more organized. You'll see some of these bins are actually taller. And the reason I didn't order a ton of them was because I wasn't sure how they were going to work out being that they are about an inch and a half plus bigger than the shelf itself. But if you kind of float them in the center there, it's not too bad. So I'm going to order up a bunch more of the bigger bins versus running with these, uh, these smaller ones. And uh, yeah, I think we're just going to go around, bin everything up. Each bin's gonna get labeled, so that'll be nice and uh, convenient and make it easier because uh, some of these top ones are a little hard to see what shirt it is. But you know, every day we make improvements, we feel more and more like the big boy, so that's cool. Maybe eventually, uh, you know, we'll save enough money to update the old uh, office chair here for my house. It's like my original office chair I bought for my house, I don't know, nine years ago when I put a little desk in my room, but you know, other than it peeling a little bit, it still works. Now, unfortunately, um, our wiring guy didn't get a chance to get Chris's light installed today. He just got so backed up. So tomorrow, Chris's light is getting installed. I actually have the light bar somewhere over here if he didn't take it. So this is Chris's light bar. I seriously hate how the ping pong table is becoming a parts table, but I'm telling you guys, anytime I have a flat surface, it is inevitable that it's gonna become some type of workbench or storage. So what we got here is the Phoenix uh, Fusion light stick. So Chris is going to have this mounted up uh, behind his grill. Now Phoenix is actually completely made in the USA. Uh, I believe, depending on what you get, some of it's actually made to order. And if I'm correct, don't quote me on this, each one of these little rectangles here is uh, 800 lumens. Oh, speak of the devil. What's up, Chris? Welcome, buddy. I got a sweet light bar for you. You want it? Um, so yeah, I believe each one of these is 800 lumens, and they're all gonna be white. And do the do the math. Do the math. 800 times. One, eight. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 800 times eight. 6,400. Did I get it? I'm getting good, guys. I'm getting good. So 6,400 lumens. They'll do all white and then you can have them in like a variation of color if you want amber for, uh, you know, construction or whatever. Uh, Chris also has some other stuff going on to his truck that we also can't talk about. Um, but we'll just leave it at the light. So the light's going to get mounted um, behind his grill and the GMCs have like little slits in there. So it will be 
basically it's gonna fit exactly in this slot right here I believe it's a little bit wider so it's gonna be behind there um, they have different size options it could have been a lot narrower which would have been about to there but Chris opted to go wider and then you're just gonna bury a little bit of the light behind there but from the front it's not gonna look you know you're not really gonna notice that's what's going on so yeah unfortunately uh, like I said they didn't have time to get to Chris's truck today so tomorrow it's all getting installed and I'll, uh, I'll show you guys what it looks like but it's gonna be bright you know they're not a rigid light bar they've got different purposes than that but they uh, they turned out pretty sweet well even though today didn't go exactly as planned we did get some stuff done at the warehouse um, we had a couple meetings here so that was cool and tomorrow is hopefully the big install day for the OBS Center console uh, Chris's light bar and a couple other things will hopefully be done by the end of the day as well So I really look forward to bringing you guys that content and with that we're gonna wrap up today's video as always Thank you guys so much for watching if you're not subscribed already Please click the subscribe button now that we do not miss out on any future content Don't forget to give this video a like aka a thumbs up Don't forget to check out workfortapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life You gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best. I'm out Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh.